In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. For he whom did merit to bear, Alleluia, has risen as his head. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who has given joy the whole world to the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech you that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may attain the joys of everlasting life to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today. Ah, hallelujah. To him glory and praise. Ah, hallelujah. He has died and rise again. Ah, hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with your spirit. This Mass will be offered for Frank Maloyd, Sr. Dear brethren, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to, to bless this water He has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May He help us by His grace to remain faithful to the Spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who will that through water, the fountain of life, and the source of purification, even soul should be cleansed, and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased to bless this water, by which we ask protection on this day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you in heart made clean and worth to receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. I saw water coming from the right side of the temple, and to whom this water arrived, they will say with us, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in restoring glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confidence, hope, to, re to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, Indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. 
you are Israelites. Hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by a set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet, and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne. He foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, My Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld. Nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by our ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord Jesus Christ, open the scripture to us. May our heart burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia! Na dapne mo lai albu fomi bisin shandar ki fishra na evangelium adestia presentan mi siru tale bena tale spiritu santo amen. The Lord be with you and also with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were all conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevent them from recognizing him, and he said to them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast, and one of them, named Cleophas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and rulers both hand him over to a sentence of death and crucify him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And beside all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astonished us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they have indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with, with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman has described, but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then he began with Moses and all the prophets. He interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they argued with him, Stay with us, for it is near evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were open, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scripture to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathering together the eleven and those who were with them who are saying, The Lord has truly been risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted, what took place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. and how they come to recognize him at the breaking of the bread. 
Today, the third Sunday during Easter, the Church presents to us a beautiful reading for meditation. As you know, dear people, the liturgy that we celebrate every Sunday, in fact every day, is divided into two parts. Liturgy of the Word, Liturgy of the Eucharist. And today we are going to see why the Church, in her wisdom, did such a thing. Because both are necessary in order that we fulfill our duty, we call it the Sunday duty. We need to hear the Word of God, which open our hearts to welcome Him, then at the breaking of the bread, which is the Eucharist. In the first reading today, we see how Peter, as he was the one to speak on behalf of the apostles, he is saying to them, to the Jewish people, what happened to the Jesus, this Jesus that God has really anointed, and he was the one that God has sent in order to redeem the world. And how they, the leaders of the Jewish people, has put them, put him in the hands of sinners, crucify him and destroy him. But God, in his wisdom, he raised him up, and they are witness of this event, of the resurrection. We go then in the second reading today, and we find the same, the same person, Peter, in the words of St. Luke, who is writing, uh, St. Luke wrote the Acts of the Apostles, and now we go in the words of Peter, who wrote them himself, and he said that we were purchased from our sinfulness, not by silver or gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus. So you see how fortunate we are, and how guardians we need to be over this gift of faith, the gift of grace. Because this grace was given to us, not by finance, not by something that today is and today now, but by Jesus who was then, he is now, and will be forever. The precious blood of the Redeemer, who washed us clean, and make us now reconcile again with the Father, and gave us the adoption to be children of God. But I like to consecrate, concentrate today on the Gospel. Go with me. If you can close your eyes so that you imagine that you are part of this beautiful encounter. The two disciples of Emmaus, we know that one of them was named Cleophas, after all this happened, the dying, the rising of Jesus, and all this experience, they are returning back seven miles down the road from Jerusalem to their own town. And while they were going there, a stranger happened to reach out with them and question them. What are you debating? What are you discussing? And one of them said to him, you are the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know what happened in these days about Jesus of Nazareth, the anointed one, the prophet one, the one that God put his seal on him, how he was betrayed, crucified, and buried. And all of a sudden, some of our people, in fact some of our women, went to the tomb early because they have to prepare the body for the burial because they cannot do it on Friday because of the Passover. And they claim that this Jesus is arisen. And Jesus began to speak, speak to them the Holy Scriptures. Remember that the Old Testament, dear people, is very essential to understand the New Testament. That's why he said he began with Moses and all the prophets. Because everything that was said through those times has to come a realization and the fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. As Moses lift up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man has to be lifted up. And then everyone who will look at him will be saved. Huh? All the prophets have spoken something about Jesus and Jesus fulfilled all their prophecies. 
And as soon as he is talking with them and, the, and debate with them and tell them that Jesus the Christ has to suffer in order to enter the kingdom because this was announced by the prophets, he pretend that he was going to go along as they arrive at their place. Oh no, he sa they said, it is night. It is not nice to go traveling in the darkness. Stay with us overnight and tomorrow you continue your trip. And while they were in a table, Jesus took the, took the bread, broke it, said the blessing, and gave it to them. At that very moment, at the breaking of the bread, their eyes were open, and they recognized Jesus. But he vanished from them. He vanished from their sight. So you see, dear people, how important it is, the Mass. The Mass is that we read from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and even if Sisters Verbum Christi, the very word of Christ in the Gospel, and we see what Jesus is trying to say to us, even in today's world, 2,000 years after his spoken those words, or even years before him, the prophets and the Old Testament. And how sometimes even we, during the readings of the Mass, we are alienated and sometimes also sometimes we go through the readings like we are reading the book of Shapes, Shakespeare or some other, some other, other author. Little we know that if you really put yourself in the spirit of what that book was written by, the inspiration that God gave to the authors to write them, you too will be filled with fire. And you will be emotionally, especially when I read that Jesus said to them, How ignorant are you that you don't know that the Messiah has to suffer, that the Christ has to suffer? This is what the prophets have said. David too, he said, and I look at the one who was pierced on the cross. You see, all the prophecy and all those that were spoken to him in the Old Testament come to a fulfillment as Peter said in his reading. Do you know what David did? And how he was the beloved of God? And how God promised him that after he died, that one of his descendants will sit on his throne. And he was referring to Jesus. My dear people, as we call the celebration of the Mass today, I wish that you have so much love for the Holy Scriptures. You know, I was raised differently. And I used to go to the catechism every night till before I entered the seminary. And one man that is really responsible for this, for this catechism that we learn every day, his name is Dun George Preka, a priest, a very humble priest, who died in 1962. And he has a vision to really educate by evangelizing the Maltese people in the truth. And when he used to speak about scripture, he used to say, the voice of the beloved, the voice of the beloved, because the word of God, that even registered by the authors, the prophets, the, the evangelists, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Mark, and all those who wrote, they were inspired by God to give us the message not their message, but the message of God. And when you read the scripture, you have to have this fire within you. Because this is what Jesus is all about. Scripture was written purposely for the coming and the fulfillment of what Jesus is all about. If you are not familiar with scripture, you are naive and that negligent of who Jesus is. And then, of course, we read the scripture during Mass to open our hearts. God spoke, speak to us during Mass. And then, of course, we come to the altar. And there, at the breaking of the bread, we come to recognize Jesus, who is now being given to us under the species of bread and wine for the nourishment of our soul. First, he gives us, as we say, his principle by which we live. And then he nourishes us by his body and blood to strengthen us in that principles, in that virtue, in that etiquette that we need to live by. 
I don't know if you know that, but our Bishop Sullivan, his motto of his episcopacy is in the breaking of the bread. And I don't think that there, there is difference from what we are reading in the Gospel today. That the Bishop has a mind that we recognize Jesus in the Eucharist. Although sometimes, you know, in these days that we are going through in this uh, lockdown, we are not frequented to receive the Eucharist. But believe me, dear people, there is the seal and the center of our faith. Jesus is the, is the center of our faith. As the Council, Vatican Council speak, Christocentico. Eh? Christ is the center of our belief. Without the Eucharist, we have nothing. Why? Because Jesus make a promise to us that he will remain with us and he remain with us in a very special way in the sacrament of the earth. That's why it is very important that we reverence this Eucharist. It is very important that we come to Eucharist very disposed, although we are not worthy, that we dress properly for church, that we really receive him with great awe and devotion, that we take him now with us wherever we go to home, to place of recreation and work, so that he will bring that peace. He will bring that message. He will bring that love that he brought from the Father. My dear people, I say to you, have great love for the Word of God, that you nourish and you meditate on it if you can every day. Our Holy Father said, you can have a little Bible in your, in your pocket. Today we can say, we have the iPhones that we carry with us, and you can have an app there, and you can read um, a, a verse or a paragraph of the scripture, whatever you, read, you want, especially you are waiting for something, or you are on lunch break, or something like that. And love the scripture, because you get in love with whom Jesus is. The more you know of him, the more you love him. And then, of course, the great gift of the Eucharist, that sometimes, you know, my heart breaks when I see thousands and thousands of Catholics who, before this lockdown that we have, uh, they were not attending Mass on Sunday. I don't know where this comes from. I don't know what is the, the answer for this. But let us really make a promise to Jesus to return back to Him. Because I think everything that we go through, there is a meaning behind it. That Jesus saying to us, come to me, all who labor. Come to me, all who suffer. Come to me, all who experience this hardship, and I will set you free. Do we believe that? If we believe that, then we don't leave this sacrament alone. But we are nourished by him. We are strengthened by him. We have the disposition that he is not going to leave us alone. And he is not going to leave us even in this hardship that we are going through. So we pray that the love of Scripture and the love of the Eucharist will be the goal of our entire life. God bless you. And together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, cause to stand with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, died, was buried, and rose again on the third day in according to the scripture. He ascended to heaven and the seat the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Amen. Like David, we abide in confidence that the Lord, for we trust that God will never abandon us, 
Therefore, let us address God with our need and the need of all. For the church, that like the early disciples, we may testify sincerely to Christ's power over sin and death and his promise of salvation to all humanity. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may emphasize with those whom they serve, especially those who are least among the people and vulnerable. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and farm workers who plant the seed and tend the seedling, that they will grow and bear fruit that nourish and delight many people. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have been or or will be baptized during the Easter season, that they may be onward signs of faith of their families, friends, and communities. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may strive to recognize Jesus in those we encounter, especially on our journeys, in our Word of God and the Eucharist. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for this for our people especially, those who are infected with the virus and those who care for them, doctors, nurses and aides and all those who have died, especially to be consolation to the loved ones, let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, help us to spread your mercy and love to all that we meet. Hear the prayers we make to you today and grant them, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we acceptable by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, this offering of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceased to offer himself for us, but defend us and ever plead our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Father, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is, the, is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Frank Sr., whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. In a very special way, we pray for our loved ones. In Nanna, Kapilam, Pauvika, Tsia Maria, Tsia Gopur, Manuele, Chance, Casacaregione, Signor Alessio, Giovanni, Rosario, Don Sal, Don Giuseppe, Don Nazaren, Don Ari, Don Michele, Patri Martin, Patri Kerr, Giorgia, Michele, Mary, Jane, Marie, Eva, Regina, Andy, Janet, Mary, Carol, and Jack and all those who die from this virus. Have mercy on us all, we pray, as with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, especially St. Mark the Evangelist, today's feast, St. George Preca, and all your saints, I have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we it, him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with your spirit. Anius Dei, quit allis peccata mundi, miserere no hobis. Anius Dei, quit allis peccata mundi, Miserere no hobis, Anius Dei, quit allis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Mulei Gesù Cristo, ben alla al hai, ben mautie, che per il mio figlio messia, ben hidma dal Spirito Santo, in tate al hai al iddini, 
در جسم و دم آدستی کالیس نمختیه تکل میکول هد. زمده ام پدی لرک من دم دتیه و تالین آت نم فرت من دم دتیه. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, my soul shall be healed. Corpus et sanguinem Domini Jesu Christi, custode vitam eterna. Amen. We make our spiritual communion. O oh Jesus, I believe that you are in the real presence of the altar. How much I long to receive you. Come to me spiritually. And may these days of uniting myself with you come soon. May you have mercy on me, O oh Lord. And through you and through you alone, lead me to eternal salvation. Amen. Mulle en emmen fi kollok verita, mulle en itma fi kollok nina, mulle en habba fu kollok kollok im habba, minda mesherest ko fendeita kollok tiba nina, in adas rubis sagramentia kollok dosia. Let us pray. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you have pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Before we say the prayers of St. Michael, today we have to bless the wind and bless the crops because now today is, is the uh, Feast of St. Mark. We, we, it is the blessing of the Regations. And uh, I remind you that this Friday is the beginning of the month of May, dedicated to the Blessed Mother. Make sure that you say the rosary at home. Make a little statue on a table or a picture of the Blessed Mother. And we will, uh, we, we will dedicate to her um, this month for her intercession. As you, know, as you know, the bishops of Canada and United States together, this coming Friday at noon, they will consecrate our country, the country of America and Canada, to the Blessed Mother. So if you can join them, um, you can take up, um, you know, open television, EWTN, and join them in making the consecration by following the words of the consecration. It's very simple. I give this, I give you myself, Virgin Mary, and, and uh, with our country and all that we have, as a, we consecrate it to you and we ask for your intercession. They are doing this because of the epidemic that we are going through, and Mary will intercede like always did in the past. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snare of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. 
And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Heavenly Father, on this day of the Feast of St. Mark, we ask you in a very special to bless the crops and bless those who work them and give production to these crops so that people can maintain themselves. And we ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We bless the four winds today. Christ the Lord is risen today. Christian haste your vows to pay. Make your joy and praises known at the Paschal victim throne. For the sheep the lamb has bled, sinless in the sinner's stead. Christ the Lord is risen on high, now he lives no more to die. Have a nice evening, everyone.